Hey, we're live. Woo -woo. I'm just getting the link to send out to everybody and uh, we'll be ready to go with minimal technical difficulties. Thank God. Kind yeah. of. We've already experienced enough. It should last us the rest of this live. <laughs> Why would you just jinx <laughs> us like that? I don't have any wood to knock on. Where's the wood? Dang it. I'm going to have to get out and knock on a tree. Right? That was just, we were going to be good and now. All right. So, I'm so glad you're with us, Crystal, too. This is going to be, this is a new thing for us. Okay. Hopefully the first of many. Agreed. Right. I got the link. Let me just put it in here. And plus, we were doing True Crime and Wine Wednesdays before, but we took a little break, and now we're back. <laughs> I'm excited because we've had a lot of people asking them for it, and I think it'll be a good way to get a break midweek and get some new cases out. Here we go. I sent the right link out, Teresa. You're welcome. Okay, good. <laughs> Moving up in the world. <laughs> All right, I'm, let, I'm trying to find stuff now. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to comments too so we can get our live chat going. We are ready. Hey. Is your laptop working better, Crystal, with that? Yes. Well, yeah. you guys can hear me, right? So that's a start. <laughs> I, I know. I'd love to see your pretty picture, but I was like, well, this isn't going to work. Yes. I don't have any pictures on this. I don't use it, really. <laughs> so I'm sorry. We'll do it. We'll get it for next time. On your laptop? That's why it's even charged. Right. <laughs> oh, I know. Mine never would be if I wasn't trying to prepare for it. Forget that. Yeah, it's well. I applied it, my, it so honestly, I don't even know if it's like, charged. <laughs> you might want to find your charger. That'll be the next <laughs> thing. That yeah, yeah, no, I, I plugged uh, it right in. It wasn't taking me. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be that happens to me once, and it's a brand new computer, but it drains so fast. So, uh, poor Teresa, I'm prepared this time, but poor Teresa, like a lot of times, halfway through, I'm like. <laughs> And I got to dive under the desk and crawl around for the charger. And you can see my hand. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> well, one time, one time she did it and she was like, I need to go find my charger. And she like literally had just posted a bunch of pictures like of the area around where she lives in like Colorado and, you know, all the like the walk stuff. And I'm like, all right. So I guess we're going to go on a tour of a state I don't live in. Like, okay. <laughs> I was like, Teresa, show him this map of uh, Frederick. I'll be back in a few. She's like, I don't live in Cal Colorado. Oh, As you can see, the map says Frederick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, so we're going to go south from here. And I'm going to assume that this is going to be a probable area that we're going to want to look at when she comes back. <laughs> I was like, this is a mess. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You no, know, and she's like, you turn left here, you turn right there, and you end up right here. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I can't tell you. It takes a village. Okay. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, hey, Bob. Daddy. Hi, Susie. Hi, Abby. Hi, Daddy. Hey, everybody. Hi, Leslie. Oh, Susie has pants on, but do I? We don't know. Right. Susie, no, what? what? <laughs> Okay. I'm all, here's the thing like we can't we can't prove it no we can't um okay so i think we've got everything um you know we couldn't hear crystal so we had to restart everything and now we're good i think yes it's all my fault i'm sorry guys <laughs> it's your fault i don't know what that was it's about. We're going to totally blame her for this week because every other week we already have to take responsibility for it. So this one's on Crystal. Probably, it was Crystal's fault. The, I'm people, like it. the people that come on every week are like, mm-hmm, weird. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> Yet it's a coincidence. Sure it is. Every week. Hmm. Jolie! Okay, Jolie. 
I was about to send out a flyer for you. I was like, where is Jolie? You were getting a private message. We were gonna have a missing we were gonna have a missing persons live for Jolie. I we I, I was like, it's not the same without you. And where's Discordus? Yep, those yep, you two is where's you been? Those two. You guys People go on vacation about you. I know every week. The middle of a rabbit hole. I can move this one, my phone. Okay. Let's and now I think the middle of a rabbit hole. <laughs> and I've got Eddie has been so patient and wonderful. So I've got the live for him. And I'm going to really get him back there. And we'll um let him explain when he does get on here, but we thought this was a good opportunity to bring this case to everybody. It's um, been getting a lot of traction, and um, we just thought it would be good to get this out and get some awareness on it. If you guys haven't heard it, and I'm going to link the Facebook group in the description, um, but we've been kind of diving into this one quite a bit, and so we have her boyfriend on tonight. Oh. Well, we're glad to have you here. You can tell we missed you. Welcome home, Jolie. Welcome home. Right. Okay. I am going to bring him on. I just want to message him. Okay. Everybody good? I'm good. Hey, welcome. Hey, Allie. Got some new people. Hello, Jameson. Oh, welcome. Their first Unmasked Live. Yes. Oh, goodness. Okay. You're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, something, something like that. These are typically, these lives are typically nicknamed the shit absolutely, show. So. Absolutely. So, absolutely so. That's part of our charm. Well, and wine is the name, right? So we could just blame it on the wine. Yes, exactly. That's true. This is the so I only have a Dr. Pepper, so I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> true crime and wine and Dr. Pepper Wednesdays. <laughs> I like okay. it. So I got a hold of Eric or Eddie, and we are ready to go. I know, Jolie, so you have been into this case. Good. Because we've been, I mean, Crystal's been talking to Eddie quite a bit. Um, I've talked to him a little bit. I've been just diving into all the details. And so it, it is really an interesting case, I think. And, you know, definitely concerning. I'm hoping that, that something, you know, pans out soon. Okay, I'm going to bring... Eddie on. All right. Hey, Eddie. Hi. Can you hear us okay? I can. Okay, good. We've had a few sound issues. So if you have any problems, um, I sent you my contact info, but I hope that we don't have any more. I think we fixed them. Actually, let me. Hi, Eddie. I'm good. Lisa. Okay, good. And then, like I told you, you got Crystal, who you've talked Hi, to Teresa. before, and Teresa. Yep. Hi, Eddie. You can't see me, but you can hear me. Hi. Cool. So, first of all, I want to say thank you so much cool. for agreeing to come on. I know this is a rough time for you, and you've got to be exhausted, and you've got everyone hounding you and telling yes, your story. Yes, thank you for getting, over. getting the word out. Yes, and we'd like to do whatever we can to help do that for you. So we have. Thank you. Very, yeah, it's very rough. Yeah, I can imagine, and I, I know, and I was I've seen in the group today. And by the way, before we get started, I want to mention that I am going to link the group, you guys, um, for Kelly, in the description. So if you haven't joined, join the group. You know, get in the discussion. You know, pass out, share the missing flyers, anything that we can do to get the word out. And I will have all of the information when we get done in the description box. Yeah, and we'll get into it, but they were coming from Florida to Detroit. So, I mean, that covers a huge area of, you know, where she could be. So, no matter where you are, um, it's important that you share it. So, Absolutely. we appreciate that. 
Okay, let me make a note to do that. And then um, what I was hoping, Eddie, and like I said, I know you have to be exhausted, but there's very, some people are very into this case. Some are just hearing about it tonight for the first time. And I would love if you would just kind of um, maybe give us the background and kind of walk us through um, what happened. Sure. Yeah, we, we were on our way to Detroit. We we're living in uh, Gainesville, Florida. Um, Micanopy, actually, which is south of Gainesville. It's a Grayland Gainesville Micanopy line. And um, our plan was to take one road, Route 75, right from, right from Micanopy to Detroit. It was like it was meant to be. Um, she drove her car down from New Hampshire. She bought a car up in New Hampshire. Which was uh, drove it down. And uh, we also decided that we would still do the Detroit thing because we do argue a lot. We break up and then we're not doing Detroit and we are. Um, so she drove down. We loaded up my truck and her car with all of our stuff because we're moving. We're moving off of this out of this place. And uh, chickens and all. We, we, had, we had eight chickens uh, on this farm um, just for the eggs. And uh, she wanted to bring them because our plan was in Detroit. We we're going to buy a $2,000 house and, and buy a couple lots next to them and, and farm the farming, growing my own vegetables and having chickens. And she got into it too, since she's, she's known, known me. Um, so I up our chickens, my dog and all of our stuff and uh, started heading that way. I, I have a 1982 Toyota. So, uh, I always knew the transmission was on the fritz, but I, I really thought it was going to be, but it burnt up um, about an hour and a half up the road in White Springs right off of 75. Transmission just, just burnt up. Oh. And uh, so she pushed, she pushed my truck off the road into a gas station. This was, this was the night of July 9th. Uh, so we're, we're frustrated, but we're not that frustrated about it. Um, we, 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 we stay the night there on the lawn. The next morning, we get it towed to Live Oak, uh, Reese's Auto in Live Oak. And uh, we're there, hanging out there, waiting for the transmission guy to show up so he can assess the situation. Uh, we find we found a place to put our chickens because we, we, we they're, they're in a dog kennel, so we needed like a, a coop to put them. So um, that day, we got lunch at um, Armando's in Live Oak. And um, we're very talkative and kind of loud. So people are looking at, and uh, we have our dog too. Uh, so then later that day, we're hanging out outside a lease shop. And um, I know this is not a night, but it's leading up to it. Um, Laz, the, the, the owner of Armando, sees us trying to call places, call farms in the area, try to find a place for our, our chickens. He calls us over because that he can help us. So we're really excited about that. We put our chickens in the back of his truck and we follow him to his place out of town, out of town. Um, and he brings us to his back. He's got like uh, three acres or so uh, um, south on 129. We bring, he shows us the coop. We're all excited. We put the chickens in it. They're really comfortable now. They have room to walk around and, and, and they're safe. They're in a, they're in a fenced in spot. We go back to Live Oak. We find out that um, I think that night we found the transmission was bad. We ended up we ended up going back to this property and um, and camping. We're like we we we're like we don't maybe, maybe we can just camp tonight. The truck will be fixed tomorrow. So we 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 oh no that I'm sorry that night we actually went to Lake City and went to a hotel called the Cypress Inn in Lake City. Stayed there. Um, got got breakfast at Waffle House the next morning. Me and her don't like chains, but we went. We like Waffle House, so we went there the next morning. Got breakfast. Went to Live Oak. Lake City is the biggest town near near Live Oak, and uh, we, we so after breakfast we went to Live Oak to the car check on the chickens. Uh, the car still wasn't fixed yet, so we um, went to check on the chickens. Uh, that, that day we're hanging out in Live Oak. Um, I think I think that day we found out that the, the transmission is actually unfixable and we need a new one. So that night, so so on the night of the eleventh, we camped at we, we we found a tent at a thrift store and we camped at this location where the chickens were. 
uh, in his backyard. We called before, make sure it was okay. So we camped there. Next day, we uh, we went to St. Augustine because we uh, we still couldn't find a transmission. They said they were going to look for one. So we went to St. Augustine because we always wanted to go there. State Park, set up our tent there, like eight bucks for a night. We walked the beach, we had a good time with the dogs. Uh, next day, we, oh, the next morning, we, we, we found a transmission down in Lakeland. We found out that we had to look for a transmission ourselves. So we found one way down in Lakeland, Florida, about three hours south. So we, Kelly agreed that that's what we got to do. So that's what we're going to do. So she's so awesome that we, we, we made room in her, our, her car filled with all our stuff. We drove three hours down to gas. This is my transmission for my truck. Um, she just paid for gas without even a blink, a blink of an eye and uh, got the transmission. We went all the way down there. I paid for it. We drove it all the way back up and turned out to be the wrong one. It turned out to be the, 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 the people in the computer. So we're frustrated about that. Um, so we decided to uh, we decided to get a hotel room when, when we or that, that night we brought it back and put it next to my truck and they were closed when we got back to auto. So we went back to the chickens and slept there again on the ground. Came back the next day, realized it was the wrong transmission. But when we came when we came back, we put the chickens back in the dog kennel because we thought the truck was gonna be fixed that night, that day, because we brought in the transmission we thought. So we put the chickens back in the dog kennel. Laz brought the chickens back to town because he was there. We put him in the back of his truck. We went back to town. And um, then we found out once we have the chickens back that it's the wrong transmission. We just tell her to one more night. It was actually her idea. She said, let's just have the truck towed to the Detroit or something. Let's just go. I said, let's give it one more night. Of course, now I really regret saying that because then we got a hotel at Sunshine. We had one of the mechanics at, at, um, at uh, Reese's bring the chickens to the hotel. And we followed him to the Sunshine Inn. It's just this, this hotel right on the outskirts of town, right on 90, five minutes from Reese's Auto. It's not that far. Followed him there um, just because it was the cheapest place. Um, they, they pulled over to the to the side because we were trying to kind of sneak the chickens in, in because the hotel people wouldn't really like that because we already had to convince them to let, our, let us put our dog in the room. So I paid for the room, and then um, – I went back and, and the chickens are still in the back of the truck. And I kind of, it was a frustrating day because it was hot. We got the wrong transmission. So I got mad. I, I, the chickens were still in the back of the truck. I'm like, why didn't you get them out yet? So we, we get them out of the truck and she wants to bring them upstairs. I, I got, I got the room right next to the stairs on the, on the top, on, on the second floor. She wants to bring them into the room. And I said, no, that's a ridiculous idea. We we'll just leave them out here. There's grass here. So that's how the argument started. Now we're bringing the now we're bringing the chickens up the stairs, and I I'm getting really mad, and I was I was a dick. I was not nice. I yelled at her. I said I'm sick sick of your stupid shit that you want to do. And uh, she she she's mad at me now. She she gets in her car and she drives into town, uh, into Live Oak. I just bring the chickens over to the corner. Dog is on the bed, and I'm just laying in the bed. That was around six p.m. Um, is this the oh, 13th July or 14th. the 14th? Okay, thank you. Uh, July 14th. And um, Tuesday, July 14th. So that, now she's in her car. She's in town. I'm sitting on the bed. She's texting me all the stuff about what an asshole I am, all the stuff. And I'm just like, can you please bring the dog food, phone charger? Can you bring the chicken food? All you care about is, is stuff, all this um, she comes back about, I also said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Can you bring pizza? Um, she comes back about an hour later with pizza and puts it on the counter, lays in bed on the other bed next to me. And I, I just go over and give her a hug. I laid down next to her and gave her a hug. And she, she just said, um, you know, I could have just went back to New York or went to Detroit by myself. And, uh, I just patted her on the back. I went, you go to, you go to New York then. And I just, you know, went, went back, went back over to my bed. She gets up, grabs the pizza, grabs the wine, and gets in her car, sits in her car. About 10 minutes later, I get up and go outside to try to get some pizza. And um, 
maybe make amends. She she took off before I could get down the stairs. She she, she took off in her car, went back into town, and um, uh, during that time when she's in there, me and I, I knock on or I ask Jr. who's this guy right next door if he can help me bring the chickens down because it was already starting to smell. So me and him brought them downstairs, let them out on the grass so they could um, graze. And uh, Kelly comes back a uh, half hour later or whatever and sees me with the chickens and comes over and gives me a hug. She's got such a soft spot in her heart that, you know, she sees me with the chickens and she came over and give me, gives me a hug. And so now we're good. Like, you know, now we're there for the chickens and we're, we're good. And, and, uh, but now we got to get the chickens back in the kennel. And um, and the dog kennel is getting dark. It was hard. We got about five of them in, but we had eight. And the other three we couldn't catch. I thought they were, they would all settle down. They didn't. We kept moving around. So Kelly's like, "No, we got to get them all, all back in." I said, "No, we don't have to get them all back in. They'll they'll be fine." Uh, um, I just Kelly Kelly was persistent about being up and, and catching the chickens. I got frustrated and I just went, good luck. And I just walked back upstairs and went back into the room and laid down. Kelly's outside texting me all this mean stuff again. You know, thanks for banning the chickens. Paragraphs, paragraphs. And I am totally ignoring her. Um, uh, eventually, uh, during this time, she went and she, she must have went and got a bottle of rum. And I'm just sitting there, nights going on around 10.30. 10 45 jr knocks on my door um he's the, he's the live oak regular he's he, he he's in and out of jail all the time he's the guy that i think knows what happened i think other people probably do too but um i'll tell you why anyway he knocks on my door around 10 45 and says hey man come outside and you know check on your girl she's out, out here crying she's drunk she's like she's saying she's gonna drive but she shouldn't be driving i'm like all right all right so i go outside and i uh, i basically She's a mess. She's crying and she's drunk and she's very, very, very upset. And uh, but I'm upset about all the all the insult text messages she was sending me. So I wasn't feeling. So all I did was was slip her keys off her waist, her car keys, and um, thinking that I'm saving the day by doing that. But uh, she just obviously that just makes her more upset. And I just I just said you can't drive. What I should have done obviously was sit down and give her a hug and bring her back into the room into safety. But instead, I just slipped her keys off her waist, and I said, "You can't, you can't drive. You're too drunk." And um, I went back into the room, and that's the last time I saw her. Uh, that was around ten forty-five. Um, she's texting me all this stuff, all this stuff about just, you know, she's a creative writer, so she can really go off. And um, around. Uh, uh, around 12:35, saying I'm leaving. You know, I'm reporting the car stolen, just because I took her keys. You know, she was obviously not in her right mind. Uh, I'm leaving. I'm. T I got my guitar and a bag of clothes, and I got the car registration. And I can't wait until the cops knock on the door because he stole my car. I'm not worried. I'm like, I didn't steal anybody's car, so I'm. I'm not gonna get. She probably didn't call the cops anyway because she likes to say that a lot. Kelly is an. Get, Kelly is an amazing. I love her with all my heart, but when she gets drunk, she does get very um, unreasonable um, to her admission. Um, so I, I just laid in bed, and she said, I, so I texted her right before I fell asleep. I said, why don't you come sleep? And she says, no, I'd rather starve to death, jump off a bridge, get eaten by vultures, and share a room with you. And I just said, K, and I fell asleep. And that's obviously the biggest regret of my life right now because uh, I woke up the next morning and she wasn't obviously because the door locks automatically when you close it. Um, I, I was hoping she was sleeping in her car and I was not in her car. I, I didn't start panicking because I have no idea where she is now. I'm hoping she's just walking around town. So I, um, I think I checked out right at that point, but um, I listened to her, her the voicemail. I don't know if you guys have heard it yet, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, at the end of it, she says, uh, "Getting." Um, but but before that, she was saying, "You know, I got my own hotel." The thing she says in, in the voicemail is, "Oh, you're sleeping." 
which me which makes me feel like she was near the hotel or right in the parking lot when she when she left me that message because I just don't feel and she also said I can own hell room right next to her, which she never did. She said I reported the car stolen, which she never did. Uh, you're a bad partner. I should do Detroit on my own. And it's like, oh, I'm getting in a car right now. Okay, bye. As if it was a big surprise. As if a car just pulled up and set out. Um, so now I'm panicking and I, I go into town. I figure she's just going to be at Reese's Auto or something. I figure she slept, she slept on the grass, which I've done before when we got in arguments. I've slept on the grass. Or she, she's walked off before, but always keeps in touch. Um, but I look for, I'm asking everybody in town, nobody's seen her. I, I And I for sure Reese's Auto had seen her, but we were hanging at Reese's Auto a lot of the time we were there waiting for the truck. Nobody, nobody had seen her. So I filed a missing persons report, went down to, uh, first I went down to Micanope to see if she was there. I went down to the farm. Okay. See maybe she just got a ride back to where we were living, and um, she wasn't there. I was like, maybe she's in the bed. She wasn't sleeping on the bed. We didn't have anything else there though. We sold our our air conditioner. Uh, really hot there, so uh, I checked. She wasn't there. I checked in the other building. She wasn't there. Uh, so I, I drove back to back to Live Oak, and that's when I that's when I filed the missing persons report. And the, the cops just put out a bolo originally just to be on the lookout for her because she's 36 years old. She she walked off on her own free will, so they didn't really take it that seriously at first. They thought – I'm like, she wouldn't even go a day without telling us she's okay, though. I'm like, I really think she's in danger. But they didn't really – I was like, can you – and then the next day, I was still there. I got a, I got a hotel room at the Sunshine Inn. Um. I went to the police station. I'm like, have you ping her? And they're like, no, you know, we don't, we don't really have evidence to say she's in trouble, so we, we can't ping her phone. And I was, I was on and on them about that for four days straight, like pleading with them to just ping her phone, get a location. That's how we're gonna find her. But they wouldn't do it. And um, do so you anyway, know what that's I, been I'm, done I'm looking yet? all over town for getting, getting hotel rooms. I don't know if it's been done, but uh, I, I, I did hear that they did get some kind of recently so hope they've been able to get get her legal issues they need to either get her phone records or, or or get the phone ping because even if they got her phone records they could see they could um see if she made any calls right. when she was sitting on those stairs or when she was around the parking lot outside um so i uh, i stayed there for three four days um the 15th, the 16th, 17th, and the 18th, I looked for, uh, printed flyers, passed them out, shared on Facebook, talked to people. And then, um, I talk in my, you know, I'm going crazy. I'm crying. I'm calling my friend Saeed, bawling my eyes out. And he's like, you gotta just come home and, you know, you're going to go nuts there. And I would have, I would have been hanging by a rope if I would still, if, I, if I'd still been there. So, uh, I had an interview with the, with the Live Oak PD before I left, like a full interview with Roundtree. Told them everything, wrote, wrote, out, wrote out a statement. They checked, they, they looked through the car. I hung flyers up around town, and start and took and I, I put all of my stuff in the back of Kelly's car, and put all of her stuff in the back of my truck, still at Reese's Auto, but it's got a cap over the bed, so you know it's all protected. Okay. Uh, I took her her laptop and purse though with me, so I could have her important stuff. To protect it, and I drove her car. And uh, first, I went to the, the, the busy beat truck stop, doing hung flyers there, and talked to them. Uh, talked to talked to businesses that had videos. Tried to get the cops to go over there to get the video. Like I did everything I felt like I could do while I was still there. Except I didn't I did not go online um, to get the sectors list. You know how you can college, you can vendors in your area on certain mm -hmm. websites. Yes, I should have done that while I was still there. Because if I, if I did that while I was still there, I would have I would have went and knocked on these people's doors, you know, just to get it, just to get a who's in there. Um, I don't think the cops have even done that yet. I wish they had because I feel like that that's why that's public knowledge. The, the, the mm -hmm. neighborhood registered sex offender. If something like this does happen, that you'd go to them first, you know. Right. But um, apparently they 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 didn't do that either. They they I, they have been working hard. Don't be wrong. They they tell me they've been working hard. A lot of a lot of other people are telling me they've been working hard on this. So, um, 
they got the video so, from Sunshine and they did that. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask, did you go to the office at, at the motel and ask them if she had gone in there and asked for another room or since she was saying she got a room I next did. to you? I did. They said they, they, yeah, they said that they, she never did that. Maybe she was planning on doing that. And that's why another reason I think she wasn't far from the hotel, because if she was planning on doing that, she wouldn't say that if she was way up the road. Because it's very important to know where she was when she, when she left that voicemail. Right. Correct. Did you? Because did she you know. Have, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Somebody saw her. Somebody. I'm sorry. Somebody saw her get into a car. You know. I mean, they're partying night. I got new names recently of people that were there. Someone must know what car. If she did get into a car, I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure she got into a car, but it sounds sounds like at the end of that. So you're cutting out just a little bit. Yeah, I just I think there's a little bit of a delay, so we'll try to kind of work around that. But so. Do, did she have a way back into the room? Sorry, I'm backing up a bit. Did she have a way back into the room? Was the door locked or did you guys both have keys to get into the room? I mean, was she locked out or was she able to get back into the room? I think he's still frozen. Oh, he's frozen. Oh. I did talk to him though, um, you know, before, as you know, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, I know a hundred percent sure we asked if um, the room had a key card or a regular key and they have regular keys. And as far as I'm aware, he had the key and that's, you know, part of the reason he feels guilty too, um, because he did essentially lock her out. Like he said, once you shut the door and you have oh, the key, well. there's no getting in. So, okay. So she, um, so he had to get him back. Oh, I'm, I know I'm messaging him right now, just seeing if he gets, um, he can just get, try to get back on the link. Um, here, here we go. Let's see. It's just kind of clocking. Oh, um, Allie, that, Allie, the bottom right is Crystal. Lost She's a moderator in one of our groups. Sorry about that. It, it, if it does that, just, you know, hopefully you can get back on it's it does that this time of night sometimes so sorry when you cut out okay so i think i understand so when the door shut um she couldn't get back in right that's what crystal was saying she couldn't she couldn't go back in but if she, yeah, i mean texted me or knocked on the door when i was still awake i would have obviously let her in okay right. Okay, gotcha. But yeah, okay. it, it does lock automatically. Okay. And she did not have a key. I missed that. She didn't have a key. Did not. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see. I was just seeing if we missed any. Okay, they're asking. I think, so I, I think I'm on a real. I'm on a. I'm on a big um lag. Delay. Yep. I think big so delay. too. So I think, yep. Unfortunately, I think you are too. Um. And then what about what, what did she have with her? And we're going to link the voicemail um, in the groups and so that everyone can listen to it. Uh, but did she have anything with her or no? Yeah, she, she had her guitar in a black case on her back and um, uh, the car registration. Yeah, that took her keys. So she took the registration just out of spite. Um, and uh, she she told me that she took a bag of clothes in a text message that she had a bag of her new clothes. I'm not positive that she that she brought that, but that's what she told me in the text message. Okay. Oh, she didn't bring her where, wallet or her purse. Where were the chickens at when she left? They were they were sitting on the on the lawn of the um of, of the motel, and when 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 she missing i just let them all out back lawn okay did she have access to the carriers that you guys had for the chickens then i figure i don't know if i i don't know if it's frozen uh my frozen? Did she, she have access to the carrier yes Yeah, there, yeah, there was just one big carry, but she couldn't fit it in her car, you know. Okay, I'm just wondering because if she had access to the carrier, the carrier wasn't in your room with you. No, we brought the we brought the chickens downstairs. 
for them to stay the night out there. Just my my on thought process: is if she planned on leaving for good, she and she was walking away, she could have put the chickens in the carrier and carried it. No, no, it's way way too heavy, way too big to carry. Okay. It's like a huge. You need, dog you need two people just to lift it into a truck. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Eat chickens, and that's crazy to me too. Like, no, she just she she was just mad. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eddie. Sorry. Delay. That she she was oh. just she was just mad and um and, and walked off. I, I didn't. I don't think she ever ever planning on getting into a car. To be honest with you, I just think, not. screw him. It's kind of the perfect like spiteful thing to say at the end of the message. Like, oh, I'm getting into a car now. Bye. Look, look what you've done, you know. Look what you're making me do. Yeah, making you like a nervous wreck. I just, like, she treats her chickens and looks at them like her children, yeah. you know. Like, she really loved her animals. So, I just can't see her walking off, planning on staying gone. She was so upset that the three chickens weren't in the kennel or the cage, you know, that she got upset with you about that. Exactly. And then she just leaves the ones that are in the kennel in the kennel, the ones that are outside, outside, and says bye. That's what I'm thinking is, like, if she was going to actually, like, up and leave and not come back, she would have found a way to take her chickens with. Right. Or she would have put them in the yeah, room. Yeah, or at least, or at least make sure they're in the, in, the, in the dog kennel or something. But she, but she was very, very drunk. I mean, she drank a bottle of rum and a bottle of wine. Uh, and she was very, very angry. And yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that I'm surprised even I'm, I'm still surprised she left those chickens like that. And, and I just think a car pulled up and it was probably a nice car or something. And she said, screw it like later, you know, and then I, I think she probably regretted it right when she got in the car. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I Amber, a, a woman that was at the hotel walking around all around the parking lot, just really, really, and, and also refusing J you cut out all night apparently something i just learned he kept refusing at me she was also drunk and i also i also learned that jr lied about what time he went to bed he told me that he he went to bed and didn't come out after he knocked on my door around 10:30 mm -hmm. well i learned about a week ago that um, amber another lady that was there told me that he was still awake at 12:30 one o'clock when she went to bed he was still outside Mm -hmm. So why would he lie to me about what time he went to see he had something to hide? Wonderful. And he's also the one that stole my guitars also after Kelly, Kelly went missing. Out of the car? No, he stole, I, he offered to let me put my stuff in his room while I was looking for Kelly because I was changing rooms every night. And I had a loss in the car. So I said, yeah, thanks. You're, you're a trustworthy guy. You're helping me look for Kelly. You're cl clearly my friend. So... I did, and um, when I when I go to leave town, I went to grab my stuff, and two guitars and my amp were missing. And I said, "What the hell is this?" And he's like, "I don't know. I wasn't like I'm like it's your room, man. What do you mean you don't know?" But I, I just at that point I didn't even care because I was trying to look for Kelly. So um, I did did find out what happened with those, and I'm gonna if I ever get back down to Live Oak, I'll, I'll go get those guitars as well as my truck, hopefully if I can find a transmission for it. But yeah, this this guy Jr. You know he he lied to me many times, so everybody he's a local i think you know I, I think he knows what happened to kelly at least at least knows who knows who picked her up and do you know if the police have talked to jr that's my question yeah i, I do know that they have talked to him yeah and I, I think they talked to him a second time as well recently but you know you're not going to get the truth the truth right and he has ties i mean i'm not gonna I, that's just I, I heard that he went to high school with a couple of cops okay oh. okay did he have friends there with him too there was it was not just him right he had people with him that was my understanding right Can you hear me? Now we can. Is everybody frozen? 
No. Did you hear Vanessa's question, Eddie? She was I'm asking not... um, who else was out there with JR. Did he have other people out there with him? Okay. Um, yeah, I learned. I, I learned. I mean, I was I was in the room at the time. I went out to grab her. But I didn't look around too much, but there did seem to be a good amount of people. And uh, I, did, I did learn a couple new names of people that were outside that I didn't know about. And I, 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 I did that to these um, people that were hanging out with JR. I did talk to people the next morning um, that were awake. Um, and, and they all said, all four people told me that they all saw her walking east with her guitar on her back and her phone to her ear uh, east towards town, like across the Sunshine and parking lot around 1230, 1 o'clock. They didn't know exactly when, but they said it was late. Um, for some reason, the Sunshine in camera doesn't pick that up, though, which is very confusing. Are there any other businesses right there that could possibly have surveillance and pick it up? The Live Oak Motel is just east of Sunshine, and they don't have cameras. Um, I, I, I walked that strip. Um, there's one about eight blocks up the road uh, called Live Oak Tire Center that does have cameras that face the street. The already currently reviewed it. And um, uh, there, 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 is, there is cameras at, at, um, at a gas station at Route 90, which is where the Sunshine Inn is on, and, and Walker. Like, like, right up the street. And I think that's where Kelly even got the rum. Uh, but uh, th their cameras only face the parking lot. I don't think it faced the street. I don't know what the cops know at this point, really. I don't know what they have. Right. They, they don't tell me anything because I am the boyfriend. I am a person of interest. So, And it's an open investigation, so they can't really tell anybody. Um, right. I was just going to say they I, won't I call them a lot. Like, I call them every day, and they get very, very... I, I think they are on to anything they can be on to. I think this is just good to get the word out, really, um, to more people. It is, and that's why I know um, Vanessa. In case, really to by any this. crazy fluke chance. Yeah, and that's why, um, yeah. you know, like in the beginning, myself, I was talking to Eddie, and then I brought in Anne Marie and Stephanie. Um, and we were all just, you know, trying to talk to him about what happened and get any clues that we could. Um, he told us about, you know, trying to ping the phone. And he did send us a screenshot, by the way. Um, he used an app. Was that Google or what was that to try to ping the phone? That was, yeah, that, that was her Google account. Um, right. That I signed so he tried into like the Google. And the Google tried to ping her phone, phone in a location. But I. All it showed us was yeah, 2 but I, I, p.m. in the USA. So that wasn't, you know, very much help at all. Um, well, it did, it did say when her phone was last synced to her Google account, which is helpful, which is 2.10 a.m., which is an hour and 10 minutes after she left me that voicemail. Right, right. But it didn't give us a location except to say it was in the United States. So <laughs> that wasn't very right. helpful. But and it, and it could be an automatic sync that happens like every 24 hours and, and do, goes in a cycle. Ah, that's um, true, too. So speaking of her phone, though, I do know that she had a prepaid phone, correct? Yeah. Uh, it could have been on longer than that. So, but so has anybody yeah. made sure to pay yeah, her bill prepaid. current? But is it current so that her phone number still works? Yep, I, I paid it. Good. Okay. It's still current. Yeah, I paid it on the 26th of, of July, and her friend just paid it on the 26th of July. So it is current. And actually, awesome. today I, I tried calling her phone, and you could leave a message. This has happened about this has happened about three or four times since she's went missing. Where her, her mailbox will be full. You know, it'll be full for days. You can't leave a message. And then all of a sudden you'll call and it'll beep and you can leave a message. So I, I gave that information to Captain Roundtree today and he might be able to get some paperwork pushed for, for some reason because of that. He actually the he was able to leave a message too and he follow up with T Mobile about that or Metro PCS and hopefully okay. get Get some kind of uh, green light to, to do something. So you run into a couple issues because she's obviously old enough that she can make her own decisions and she could leave if she wants to leave. So the cops run into that first and foremost. Um, two, you do run into the issues that you guys are traveling through and you're not local. So they, they 
not necessarily the same sense of urgency to jump on it because she could just be traveling and doing something else with yeah. her life. Um, and then three, if any of these other people do know somebody, I don't know how big is the town that this motel was in? Is it a small town or big town or? Tiny. 6,500 people. So then you run into that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sorry, I was tough. having difficulty. Yeah, I don't think, I, I think, I think her, her definitely got delayed because of all those things you just said. So, but now that she's not back and, and obviously I think the biggest issue from what I'm seeing is that she hasn't contacted her mom and that's somebody that she's never out of contact with. Is that true? Not, not for longer than three. Yeah. Not for longer than three weeks. That's what her mom says. Okay. Hey, Vanessa's back. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah can definitely you hear me? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had to switch to my phone. My something's wrong with the, but it works on here. So I'm just gonna have to do it this way. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but all right. So I know you were writing down a lot of questions too. I was. Vanessa. Okay, go ahead. Um, I was writing stuff down and then got booted off, but I'm glad I could get back on. I was like, well. Take it away, Teresa. Um, so I was trying to look through comments too to see what else we missed here. Um, There's a ton of good questions in the comment section. I, I wanted to let him get his whole story out first, though. Yes. yes. Uh, I wanted to ask one more thing, if I can. So if she was walking east, yep. she would have been on about 90? Yep. And, and you guys... Like as a search party type of thing, did you guys walk what she would have walked? And then like check out like outwards I did. of that? Like um, into the fields or into anything else? I mean, I obviously drinking a I bottle walked, of I walked water, ditches of water along the road. I looked I looked the the rum was the rum was on the floor of the car the next morning. That's how I knew that she was drinking that. I didn't even know she drank until the next morning. Okay. Um, I, 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 I looked for vultures. I looked for, you know, I, lo I looked in, I looked at, I walked the uh, railroad track across the street. Uh, bitches. Um, I have no idea what happened that night. I have no idea, you know, went into a car when she got into a car. There's been good sightings. There's been apparent sightings of her, but none confirmed. Whether even she, I mean, I'm guessing she got into a car because, she, you know, she's not, she's not still out there walking. When she got into a car, that's the story. I mean, it really sounds like on the on the on the voicemail that she, you know, was hopping into a car. But a lot of people are saying her voicemail sounds like she's inside, because there's no wind or background noises. It's hard to tell, but you you can. It does sound at the end like you can hear something after she says, I'm getting into the car. It does sound like you can kind of hear. Like what I was imagining in my head is right at that moment, you know, she's not expecting it. A car pulls right up and she's like, oh, you know what? No, I'm going to get into a car now. And that's kind of what it struck me as. Um, so it, it, but it is hard to tell. It almost sounds like maybe she was in a covered place or um, I need to listen to it a few more times. Yeah, there's definitely some type Yeah, I mean, of, her phone's... Her phone's you know. Go ahead, Eddie. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know when anybody's talking or not. I know. It's it's just this weird delay. It's okay. We're we, it, This is... We want to let you talk as much as you want to, so... Right. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been on this for seven weeks now. On, on the Facebook discussion groups and, and um, yeah, uh, people people are saying it sounds like there's an echo in the background. I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I'm I'm thinking she was outside just because of the last the last thing she said. And and, and, and right. unless she was in Jr's room when she left that message, unless she was downstairs in, in one of the downstairs, that's possible too. Yeah, I, I don't know. That impression I don't know where that. she was when she left. She could have been. She could have been sitting in her. 
could have been sitting in her car when she left the message. But nobody that was awake when she left that they saw her getting into a car. And if she was in, if she was in the parking lot when she left me, that did get into a car right after that. I feel like unless everybody's lying because nobody wants the cops around, which is possible because it is known as the drug motel to the to the locals. I, I learned after. Then they would they would say, oh yeah, she she walked that way instead of saying no, she got into a car right here. So yeah, everybody's like, I, mean, I also think if she did, I mean, yeah, right. I I do think I do that th that th what I do know is. Um, the sun ran in camera did get a car taking a left west away from town, taking a left out of the sunshine in at the same time that Kelly left me that message. Hmm. Hmm. And but you I guys I, but nobody that. told me that they saw her getting into a car. Huh. So you guys did that search, Eddie, um, of the park. Did any did they find anything? Do you know of anybody that went? Any information that they were able to find? Well, or? I'm up in Massachusetts. Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I don't, I don't even know if anybody showed up to that. But um, there is, a, there is a missing persons advocate that um, apparently has teams at, uh, at the ready. Um, I, I was hoping they'd do that by now, but um, that they have actually pro search teams ready with dogs as soon as they get a location of where to look. So uh, ho hoping that happens soon. Because you, I don't know if she's alive or dead, but it'd be better to find her than not find her at all. Uh, absolutely. I mean, no, either way, it's, you don't want to have to live with the unknown. That's worse than anything, I believe. I agree. And then you're go you're gonna be in a tough spot, Eddie, and I think you know that because you are the boyfriend. And people are going to say that Eddie did something. Eddie, this has to be Eddie. Because that's, I mean. Oh, people have been saying it. Yeah, there's. Right. Yeah, but honestly, compared to the sadness of, of my, my love of my life being missing, no, no, you know, like there's there's no, and any these accusations really aren't that bad because they're not, it really doesn't even compare to, um, this uncertainty i mean i love this woman i know i know that i didn't do anything i know that i was just laying in bed like a dummy i should have been out there protecting her and i feel about that i feel a lot of guilt for not protecting because i i know she has a tendency to walk off and um and uh and, and get drunk and hitchhike and so i should have had the foresight to know that we're in a dangerous area don't let her do that even if she is it's very hard though because she was texting me paragraphs of just what a terrible person I am. And even for, even I got mad at her about the chickens, but I didn't, I didn't deserve all that. And um, yeah, it was really hard for me to go out there and give her a hug at that time. Of course, I totally regret that now, but if I'm guilty, if I'm guilty of anything. It's not protecting her, it's not going out there and actively bringing her in inside. So that's where, that's where I stand on all these, you know, accusations. Right. And at the end of it, obviously, you know, we don't, we don't know you, we can't personally vouch for you, but f from just my perspective, I can say that I, the way that you speak and the way that you talk of her, it sounds like it was a tumultuous relationship, but not something that was worth, you know, losing her over. You guys always seem to find each other again. We do. We, we're, we're like magnets. I mean, we, 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 we know how, how, my relationship needs work and we 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 took couples classes when she was in was in Gainesville, we took a zoom couples class it was, it was a group thing, so it's been very personal but it was we learned a lot but we we were planning on going to detroit and um and and getting therapy when we were there because we, we we wanted to be together we had this connection and we love each other but we just we, we did not want to continue fighting i went to jail in december for for we got in a scuffle and I was trying to get her far away enough from the door to, to close the door when I was living in game. I hit her in the eye and um, I went, I got arrested for the first time in my life because a, um, a neighbor called the cops because they heard yelling. She didn't want me to go to jail. She was trying to get me out of jail the whole time. And it was the worst thing that's ever happened.
tilt when she went missing. That is now the worst thing. Um, but yeah, and, and so because of that too, and there's a picture of her black eye that someone posted on Facebook and that's about a lot of accusations too. Um, and I learned my lesson after I went to jail. I went to jail for a week and I had to wear it in, in, for a month on house arrest. It was hardcore. They don't, they don't mess around down in Florida. And, um, you know, I learned my lesson after that and, and I love Kelly and, uh, at, this is this is insanely tragic because Kelly is an amazing person. She, she first people to occupy the Wall Street movement. She led she led a march from there to DC during that. She is an she is an incredible activist, um, feminist, uh, animal rights activist, uh, an amazing writer and artist in every respect. She is a filmmaker. She just she just submitted a, her her screenplay to Sundance. And her, her 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 submission was so amazing. She read it to me to, to describe the whole the whole movie and what she wants to do to it. And she read it to me, and it's just she's so talented. I mean, she probably her movie probably got got picked up, but we don't know because like, I, at the end of August was was the decision, and it's September second. Uh, oh. Even though it's a, it's mainly a competitive competitive. Uh, you know, competition to try to get your movie picked up by Sundance. Her her screenplay and her writing is that good that she was like, I have probably have a good chance of getting picked. So she, it's just, this would be such an insane loss, not only for me, but for so many people. She's got a 74-year-old mother in New Hampshire who lost her husband when Kelly was five years old. Kelly's dad. Um, she's got tons of friends in New York City and Living in Brooklyn, New York, for nine years. Yeah, I just can't say enough. Uh, her capacity for love is amazing. I mean, she is the most fascinating person I've ever met in my life, and I've only known her a year. And our story is amazing too. I met her when she was on tour, and uh, like she was on she was on a one woman army tour. She like she just she just got, got a guitar, and just decided she would to play it, even though she doesn't know how to formally play it. She's just like, I'm going to write songs with, with guitar noises about fascism, about choices, and it goes so every, all awesome, funny protest songs. And, and But she was hardcore about it, and she had a van, and then we spent the night together, and then the next two months, we kept in touch. We planned our own tour. I took a, I took a train up to Brooklyn, New York, and we started our relationship, started our tour after the tour. The tour was a nightmare. I mean, it was fun, but it was we were broke. We we're fighting a lot because she has she has severe PTSD, um, which she had just gotten diagnosed with like three months before before I met her. So she finally understood why she acted the way she did. Like things are more clear now. She would she would freak out about small things, and um, I I didn't have patience for it yet. I didn't know how to deal with that. But as time on, I learned. But anyway, we, we toured. We, we went back to Gainesville. She moved to Gainesville with me. And we lived in Gainesville for six months in different places. And um, not without its ups and downs, without both of us going to jail. But uh, then, then in in July, we decided we would – we all talked about going to Detroit because we both, we both um, wanted to own land because we were tired of renting, but we didn't want mortgage so we we wanted to still play music and 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 do art, and we, we so you can buy a house in Detroit for two thousand dollars and and buy a lot an empty lot for two hundred fifty bucks. Kelly has got money on her TSD diagnosis, her disability. Mm -hmm. So so we we finally were able to afford it. So so we're on our way to Detroit, and then it all freaking shattered. You know now she's she's been missing for seven weeks. And I just want to find her and, and, and bring her bring her to her mom's and give her whatever's happening or, or you know, we're not we're obviously not gonna do Detroit immediately, if ever, if we find when we find Kelly. So but, um do you talk to her family and friends or what's what's the standing there? Are you in touch with her mom or Yeah, I talked to her mom a few, a few I was talking to her every day, and now I'm talking to her a few times a week and um, she is in tears, shattered. She's, uh, I tell her to call Live Oak a little more, but I, I, I think Live, Oak's, Live Oak PD is working hard. 
I, I talked to a few of her friends, but um, a lot of her friends are very, very um, accusatory towards me, and they, they don't want to seem to give that up. They even have their own Facebook group going right now, which is like a bash eddy Facebook group I've heard. Uh, so that's kind of hard. Um, a lot of her friends are hardcore feminists, and when, when they see a bruise on her on her eye, they that, that's you know they 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 won't stop. I don't blame them for ac accusing, but they also have to look into other things. And um, I yeah, promised to them like on the other the other YouTube show we did. Mm -hmm. but, look at it from all. Angles. Yeah, uh, she, she's got she's got a lot of friends. I mean, she 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 has a she has a hitchhiking history. She's she's got friends all over the country. She's an amazing woman, and I miss her. You know, I, I I cannot believe this. I mean, she she's she's survived. That's what I think about because she is a survivor. She's even told me she's like I I she's like I I've gotten myself into some shady situations, but I always get to get out of it. She's like I think my dad's watching over me, and I, I believe he still is. I, I believe that um, she, she's surviving whatever situation she's in. She could be. She could be. Uh, could have gotten. A, she could have got bumped in the head and doesn't remember who she is. She could. She she could have lost her mind and that's anybody. That's possible. She'd be walking free right now. But she, if she wasn't her right mind, she would never go this long without calling anybody. Never want her mom, or even me or her friends, wearing like this. Just too hard. That was exactly my next question. Um, so I know I've read from everything I've read, she's moved around a lot. She's done that, you know, she's kind of, you know, maybe slipped off the radar before, but I, I might've missed this when I had my technical difficulties, but how long has she gone without speaking to her mom or her friends? Is, is a week, two weeks, three weeks? I mean, is this, is, I'm just trying to rule that out as a possibility. Well well, she, she's gone a long time without talking to certain groups of friends. Like, I've heard that she will hop off and, and not talk to a group of friends for a long time, but she'll never, she'll never go, she'll never go longer than three weeks without calling her mom. Okay. Or somebody. This is seven weeks now. So, yeah. Um, I would think that was definitely concerning, but, and I'm sure the police have followed up with her different, you know, friend groups around in different states. At this point? Yep. Mm -hmm. have, have we talked to all of them? Is that, is that what your question? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I know you don't know everything that the police are doing because they're keeping things, you know, I'm sure if it's an active investigation, they can't talk about a lot. But I was just wondering if you've talked to any of your friends, you know, up in Brooklyn or anywhere else, if the police have been in touch with her different friends around the country to check out if she's there wanting to kind of decompress. Um, I, I've talked to a lot of her friends in Brooklyn and, um, and, and, and the one person that we both, uh, the one person that she knew in Detroit to, cause we had a house picked out. So I had him go over to the house that we were going to go by and to see if she was squatting there or something. And she wasn't, um, and I, you know, he's looking around Detroit for, her. um, I don't, I, I, yeah, I think, I think the. You know, one one of her friends would come out and tell people. I mean, she she wouldn't let us all worry like this, right? Um, and we do have some really good questions and comments. I mean, I know you've been you know answering a lot of them, but um, Susie, let me see if I can highlight this since I had to change over. I hope so. Um, did she have any medical conditions or need any medications or anything like that? She didn't have medical conditions, but she she had PTSD, which which made her freak out about small things uh, a lot. Uh, PMDD as, as well, which is like a premenstrual dysphoria disorder. So she gets really, really irritable for a period. That's that's about it now. She, she just gets very irritable, but no, no, she wasn't on any medication that she'd be missing out on or anything. Okay, um, just scrolling through here. I'm really worried. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine I think about that all the time when we do these, what that must be like to be in your place and the friends and families. But I, I really can't. I, I can't. I mean, I feel like my life is over. I mean, I, I really, I'm really going to have a hard time. That, that's, that's how it feels. You know, I, I'm going to have a really hard time being happy at all in my life. This woman is not okay. You know, 
that, that's that's how bad it is. I mean, Absolutely. Luckily, I have my family here, and and, and my, my friend Saeed. I'd be screwed without them right now because I could I could never be able to take help. My my mom's cooking for me and feeding me, and my sister just showed up She's cooking for me tonight. You know, I mean, I'm very lucky I have my family, but uh, yeah, this is very 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 bad. Yeah. I really, really, really need her to be okay. And so the last time, so the, are the police being pretty quiet about everything? Have you talked to them lately? We have a question here. If um, they had taken the people's phones, like your phone, and maybe JR's phone, anyone at the motel that night to help rule people out? JR didn't, JR didn't have a phone. I know, I know that the cops did interview the, the people that were there that night. I don't know how, how, how thorough of a job they did, but... Um, all I hear is how, how, how hard they're working. I hear it from locals. I hear it from, from the person that's running the discussion group. I hear it from the cops. The cops t the, uh, talk to me when they have to, but they don't, they're, they're done giving me information. You know, they're, I, I piss them off enough by calling them a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to, let's see. Um, oh, that's a good question actually. Have they brought in any other agencies besides just the local police department? Like here in Colorado, we have CBI. FDLE, which is the, the, the state law enforcement, they brought in a little bit. I was really trying to get the FBI involved. Yeah, yeah, the FDLE has been brought in for, to, to, to example from, from the um, motel rooms like a month after she went missing, which was weird. But um. But that, that's 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 as much as I know of because one of the locals took a picture of it and put it on Facebook. That's how I know that that, that they were there. But I, that, see, that's the only way I can find out things is through Facebook. Like I, I wouldn't even know that the FDLE was ever brought in if, if I didn't see that because the cops just there. I think they're onto something though because there have been some 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 leads recently. I really feel like there's going to be answers. Okay, I hope so because just for everybody. Yeah, um, so. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah, the atmosphere was the atmosphere. Apparently, there's a lot of a lot of uh, crystal meth being smoked there. I heard later on. Um, uh, people that go to jail hang out there. Um, it was it, people were hanging out. It was it was a it was a calm, nice night, except for Kelly crying and, and being drunk um, and being belligerent. Would Kelly? You know, we we don't know. We didn't know anybody there. Yeah. No, Kelly wouldn't. Kelly wouldn't. I don't. I don't. I really doubt she would do that. I mean, she in the voicemail she sounded very drunk because okay. she's articulate. You know, even in even 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 that, tell she's really drunk. But no, she would. She's not a drug person. Her and I would smoke some weed and drink. That's about okay. it. Mama Bear's asking, that have they offered to um, give anyone a polygraph? I would be a new one, and I said, yeah, sure, and then they, they never did. Um, I think JR could really use one of those. I know his full name, but I don't know if I should say it on here because, you know. I think if point? anything else comes out about it, we'll, we'll probably be able to figure that out ourselves too. So, yeah, I would, you know, I agree. I probably wouldn't mention it. I'll post the link to the group, and then when you go into the group, you will see it, I believe. So we can do it that way. They can get all the info when they go in, and hopefully they join the group. But they can go in and see all of the inside kind of info, too, and the updates uh, when we put that up. Yeah. Um, the, admin, the admin of that group. Yeah, please is, join it. The more people. Is she from around there? Yeah. That was my question, too. She's not. She's She lives in Michigan. Um but she she's doing great. I mean, I I, I I his friends got her to, and she just knows what she's doing. She's a missing persons advocate, and um, That's that girl gets things done. It seems. Yeah. yeah, she's very diligent. Yes. Yeah, she does seem that that way. Yeah. She is. Yeah, she's not even. I don't even think she's getting paid for it. Just she she's just a great person. Um. And then Debbie, I'm sorry to get into your questions because there's there's a lot of good ones here. Um, she wants to know if there's been any kind of ransom note or anything. 
No, I got I got a fake um, extortion attempt by by somebody. I said they're like, give me money and we'll give you back your, your wife. And face, and they just sent me these Google stock photos. Um, and then that that, that was proven to be real. But uh, no, no, no note. The only note is that voicemail. Okay, God, people are so sick. Really. Um, it honestly does. It surprises me that you haven't gotten more than one. To right? be honest, being in the world that I know, like, oh, oh my God. Everything, you know, is I'm surprised you haven't gotten more than one. People do really weird things, yes. and that's what makes it hard to determine. Like, all right, you know, is this person real? Do they actually have information? Do they not? And that's why, like, the cops get really frustrated when they ask for tips, and they end up with millions that mean nothing. Yeah. Right. And that's what they're dealing with now. They're getting a lot of calls. And uh, yeah, I've run into some of the best people th through all this and some of the worst people that I've ever imagined. I mean, all these people that are putting, given all this time and trying to help find Kelly that don't even know her. It's, it's amazing. It's like you guys, you know, I really appreciate all this. Oh yeah. We, we just want to get her story out as much as possible. We're going to put her flyer up in all the groups on our pages, get the video out. Um, anything that we can do to get the word out. That's what we're here for. Yeah. And they're not, there might not be a lot of Thank people you. watching right now, but this video will get a lot of views. Um, hopefully, you know, the membership in the group goes up. Hopefully everyone that watches this goes and joins. Um, and like I said, share it because you were traveling from Florida to Detroit. That's a lot of ground to cover. So you may think sharing it won't help, but you know, you never know. Yes. You're going to see that. So, yeah. I'm gonna, I, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. That. Yeah. I've been sharing it all over Facebook. Every missing persons group I can find. Do you, did they, they said so you took her car. They didn't ask for her car or her purse or her personal belongings. Cops. Um, I was pretty surprised actually. They, they just, um, they, they, like I, I, I was like, can I leave town? I'm like, I've done it. I can't keep getting hotel rooms. And I, I talked to you guys, and they said, yeah, you can, no problem. And they, they did, they did search her. They searched her car before I left. Um, but yeah, they let with, me. They let me. The dog, her. I was like, I'll, I'll take her lap. I told them what I was doing. I was, what's see, that? So I'm surprised they didn't want to take her laptop number one to see if she had communicated with anybody else about where she was. Right. And number two. Uh, did they search her car like just by opening the doors and looking into it or did they search her car with like a scent dog or a, you know I, no, I hate to say this but a cadaver dog anything did they search her car besides looking at it no they they took the stuff out they took everything out and put it everything back in but they didn't get any dog that's crazy they were out there for a while did they take anything that could contain her DNA? Did they ask for her toothbrush? Did they ask for her hairbrush? Did they ask for anything like that? No. Wow. No, they didn't. They didn't. And I, I yeah, um, no, they, they didn't. And I'm, I'm surprised. And I was in such a daze that I wasn't even clearly either. That would, definitely would have been a smart thing to do. Do you I mean, you know, I'm just surprised you don't want personal stuff to see who she's been contacting. Right. Especially since they don't have her phone and it's turned off, you know, that was the only other way that she could have communicated with someone. Like maybe she was talking to someone and then they knew her situation and were coming to visit you guys and then saw her and picked her up, you know, you never know. No. Instagram messenger. Right. Like you just never know. Yeah. So much stuff. It could have been, I mean, some of those are only for the phone, but I mean, still some of that's on your computer too. I, I don't know. That's just, that's interesting. And especially they haven't asked for it since. Right. That's why I figured they would try to get her phone records sooner. Mm. And I, I think, I think they have by now. Cause I heard that they got a court, some kind of court order passed. I didn't get the details of it, but I, I assume by now they'd have her phone her phone records to see if she called anybody. Cause on her laptop that night, I don't believe. 
but I just mean like in general, like, Hey, we're traveling from here to here. You know, we're probably going to, Hey, Hey, the transmission went out in the truck. Now we're kind of stuck here. If you say that like on Facebook messenger, like if she has her phone, they can't see it there, but maybe they could see it. But I guess maybe they could see it if they request a warrant for the apps and they'll just do it that way. I don't know. It's in, it's, a, it's interesting. And not every law enforcement yeah. agency is. I don't think they, I don't think they, I don't think they took it all that seriously at first. She's thir she's 36 years old and she walked away from her boyfriend she was fighting with. Yeah, it's not in yeah. in the scheme of like what they're dealing with in life they they're just like, yeah, she just left and then now weeks later she's still not back and it, it's hard because those those first few hours are always the most imperative and yet when somebody is older and can, you know, technically make their own decisions it it wastes a lot of the important time, but that's our system. So I mean, I can't. I'm not going to say anything about that law enforcement agency. That's our system. Things need to be changed. That it needs to be taken seriously. If some, if this is out of character, yep. you know that she's not talked to anybody and she's not calling anybody and she didn't take anything with her. And her most important prized possession is her chickens. Well, and her guitar, but she left half of her prized exactly. possessions there. All that. Her I tried to make it. I, I tried to tell them how dangerous it was, but they were like, "No, we don't have evidence that she's in danger, so we can't ping her phone." And I'm like, "She, she got in a car and she always calls us back immediately. Right. They, she does not want us worrying even for an hour." And they're like, "No, well, they you know, we don't. We can't break any laws, so." That's right. And I was that's really kind frustrated of because legally yeah. they don't have enough information to say that she's endangered. So then they could go and say, Hey, judge, sign these warrants for all of her information. The judge is going to look at them and say, no, you're invading somebody's privacy. And that, you know, that civil right, that I mean, that right of a human being is more important than you, the boyfriend she fought with thinking there might be a problem, you know? Yeah. So they're, they, they're kind of stuck in this, do we do something? When do we do something? You know, and everybody has their own timeline right. that they can work with. It's very unfortunate. And Eddie, do you know? Yeah, well, seriously you? now. Do you know if they brought dogs out by any chance? I don't know if they have yet or not. I don't. I, I, I would hope that they, they have by now. But um, another thing, they have to like they have to have like some semi evidence to go s do a search party, which kind of blows my mind too. But mm -hmm. Gianna also has a, a team at the ready. Really, really, by now there'd be a search party, but I don't think there has been. And where is your truck at, Eddie? Is your truck still at this Reese's Auto or whatever ended up happening? Did you ever find a transmission or? Yep. No, I gave up on that after Kelly went missing. Um, right. Uh, I will try that, Susie. Thank you. That's good advice, Susie. Um, my yeah, my my truck still in Live Oak at the, at the garage with with her stuff in it. Uh, yeah, I have pictures from the trip. Yeah, if, are those on the in the groups? Because we could post those too, and anything you want us to post. Yeah, yeah, I get I get pictures from the trip. They're not too fun to look through now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can I can do that. But I was just gonna say I got a my, my my um my general idea is to get a get a transmission shipped down to Reese's Auto and have them put it in so that I can I can go down there because I'm actually going down to South Carolina pretty soon to at my mom's and then hopefully I can go from there go get my truck. And then I got to drive all the way back and also get my guitars and then drive it all the way back um, to her mom's to drop off the rest of her stuff at her mom's, which would be very depressing to do that again without Kelly. Yeah. But I really got to jump on it because I'm going down to South Carolina on the 7th. So. Right. And so what happened with the old transmission? Because I saw, like, I was just going over, you know, everything that um, you, myself and, Anne Marie and Stephanie were talking about. Um, and you had said that you were able to get a refund for the um, transmission. And then in one of the text messages that Kelly had sent, um, he had said that 
she was going to go get the money for it. So I didn't know if that was something that you did, you know, the next day, were you able to get a refund or what's the situation with that right now? Yeah. Yeah. She, that we, we, we got, we got a refund before we got the hotel room. We, we, we called, we called them enough times, you know, pissed off about the transmission and, um, and finally they were like, well, you don't even have to bring the transmission back. We'll just give you a refund. Oh, that the was nice. Not from Lakeland is still at Reese's Auto, I believe. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, and she was saying, "I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take the transmission down, back down to." That's how. That's how. That's how out of her mind she was. That's how drunk she was. She was saying ridiculous things that didn't make any sense. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm gonna bring the transmission back down to Lakeland and get the money. I'm like, we already got the money. You know, right. but mostly I was just ignoring her. I just wasn't saying anything. Yeah, you can see she was you know, sending message after message pretty much. And you were trying not to um, engage and make her more mad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did send you the text messages. Yeah. Yep. So this is a street um, shot. Have shot we informed of- the small music gig spots? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Christine, that's exactly what I'm thinking. It's like, what, even what about yeah, like straight little- shot route 75? Did she have any cash? Any money? I don't think so. She she had there there was some cash in her purse. So I figured if she was to take some cash, she would have grabbed all the cash out of her purse. And no, she uh, I don't think she had a dime when she uh, she might have had a few bucks in her pocket, but uh, yeah. And, and you know, I mean, I, I called a lot of places up up seventy five, like hospitals and um, waffle houses because. Apparently she was seen in Lake Park, Georgia. This is unconfirmed, but it sounds like her. Uh, a farmer saw her uh, walking a walking a bicycle through his vegetable field on on July twenty first, hmm. and picked her up and brought her to the, brought her to the nearest road. And then a few days after that, and when 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 she was talking to the farmer, she said, um, "I live on the streets. I'm going to try to get a job at a Waffle House. Um, uh, trying to get to Valdosta. All this stuff and and." And uh, Joey Herring actually saw the missing person's flyer on, on July 26th and said she was in Lake Park on July 21st. So I, I had his number and called him and um, and then uh, and talked to him for a while. And he was still pretty damn sure it was her. I still have no idea if it was her or not. But then, then, she went, then she went to a store right down the street from there and, and bought a black and mild cigar with which she's out of smokes, doesn't have the money. She's done it. I've known her, and she asked the clerk for a phone charger. For what kind of phone? You know, she she didn't have her she didn't have her phone charger with her. She brought her phone, but she left her phone charger in the in the car. So that would that would make sense too. But of course, the uh, the footage the convenience store fires after three did days. So we never got video confirmation. Eddie, did they say what kind of phone? He never. He she never. Had? Sorry, delay. Uh, he, he just, he just, he just said that, um, that, uh, he didn't have a phone charger for, and he didn't know what phone she had. He, I, I didn't talk, I, I, I later learned it's not good that I call witnesses, but, but I, I talked to him on the phone and, uh, he said that she, she asked for a phone charger and she, she bought a black and mild with change. I'm like, that sounds like Kelly to me. And then this is after the, the, the farmer said she was in Lake Park and she was in his truck. She was across the street. It's like, what are the odds of not being her? But then at the same time, she would call, she wouldn't let us worry. So it's very, very, this whole thing is very, very confusing. Well, I have a question about that that actually just popped in my mind. So do you know if she knew her mom's number? Because this is going to sound horrible, but right now, if I had to tell you my mother's phone number, I could not do it. I pull it up on my cell phone and call her. So is it possible, you know, that her phone was actually broken? She couldn't get it to turn back on or she never came in contact with the charger. So she hasn't been able to contact anybody or what do you think about that? Yeah, I, um, I, I don't think she ever got a charger because I know her phone hasn't been on according to her Google account. It's still the last time it synced was July 15th at 2.10 a.m. Um, but you could easily borrow someone's phone and, and call. I know she, I asked her mom that and her mom says, yeah, she knows my number off the top of her head. 
Because I guess right. when she went to jail, she had phone called her mom. Okay. okay. So she knows her number then. Yeah. Uh, were there a lot of people coming in and out of the motel parking lot in cars that night? I don't know, because I was in the room, but I heard that there were people partying outside, and um, yeah, I think there were a few. I mean, there was that car that left left the sunshine in at 1 a.m., right when Kelly left that message, so. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what that car looked like or who that car belonged to. I know that, I know that, right, it was too, it was too dark, I guess, to get a, to get the plate number or even a journal description. Um, there are PIs involved private investigator involved. Um, I think we, we just ran out of some money that are still on it. Live Oak PD is working with the private investigator, but I don't I don't personally like the private investigators. I thought they've been highly unprofessional in the way they talk to me. And I guess I won't out them here, but uh, I, I don't like them at all, but it's better to have them than not have them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's the thing is, you, you, yeah, they don't they don't really typically care if you like them. Because they're not there to make you happy. They're there to, I, you know, to find her. And, but I'm surprised they wouldn't want more information from you. Especially if they're, like, thinking that you had anything to do with anything. Unless they have another lead and they're like, dude, you're wasting my time. We already have someone we're going. Maybe they've, they've got something they're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I say. No, I, I know they don't care if I like them, but they've. You keep fighting. You keep fighting and you keep doing what you're doing to make sure that you can find Kelly. Right. And whether they, whether they like it or not, I don't know if that really matters because I think that you have to do with what you can live with. Right. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep fighting. I just wouldn't recommend these people. Yeah, I understand that. Um, does, does she know my social media passwords? Because she sounds like most text just... No, no, I don't think she knows it, and um, she hasn't been on my Facebook because I'm on Facebook every day now on these discussion groups. That's another thing that sucks is i got to be on my phone 24-7, and no, she hasn't been on her Facebook. She hasn't been She hasn't been on, on anything, it looks like. Well, Eddie, where do you think she would go? So if, if she asked the person, like, hey, take me here, typically if you're hitchhiking, that person will take you to the next biggest town. Where do you think she would go from there? Well, um, Detroit. You know, I, th I figured she would try to get to where we were going. I mean, that was We had a whole plan. We would go to Detroit, Michigan, <clears throat> get on 75. I also thought she might have gotten a ride back down to Nikonopi, um, where, where we were on the farm. And I, I went there to check, and she wasn't there. I mean, I, I uh, route route ten runs run towards Onal, so she might have hopped on route ten and went to went towards New Orleans. I mean, she could have she could have gone. I mean, if, I think she would have tried to get to Detroit if any if anything. But she wouldn't leave her purse and and her car. I mean, she, she was excited when she got that money because she had a lot of debts to pay and she paid them and she got her license back and she got the money to get this house. Did anyone something, else know? Something, something's not right. I really. Did I, anyone else know about this money that she was getting and what was the money? Like, where did it come from? It's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm really surprised it didn't get stolen out of the car because the car was unlocked. And uh, that's why she was able to grab her guitar and grab her clothes when, after I took her keys and went inside the room. Um, and then the morning it was just on the was in the car right there. Someone could have easily stole her purse. Luckily they didn't. Um, her her money came from disability. She she went to a social security office like eight months ago in New York to try to get some, some money because she just lost her job or something. So she's like, I'm gonna see if I can ability for my PTSD, which was a True diagnosis. Went there and talked to the guy, and then like left angrily because she didn't like the questions or something. And uh, so she didn't she didn't know, but apparently she got approved for payments then because she about two months ago, two and a half months ago, she she called Social Security and they're like, yeah, you've been receiving disability for the last eight months. She's like, I have. She's like, yeah, we've been sending it to this address, and she's like, yeah, I haven't lived there. All of a sudden, a nine thousand dollar card shows up in the mail. 
she had no, and she was broke before that. All of a sudden, nine uh, a stimulus check included. I uh, just just shows up on this debit card. She calls me all excited. That was when she was in New Hampshire, and she called me. And she was all excited. She's like, "You can quit your job now. Like, I can get a car. I can get my license back. We can go to Detroit. We can do this." So she she bought a car and she drove down to Gainesville from New Hampshire and loaded up and headed up. And yeah, she all that stuff was still in her purse the next morning. And is it still in her purse? ID, our, it is. I brought I brought about about a week and a half after I, I went back home. Um, the officers kept telling me like you, you really got to return that stuff to mom because it's gonna be theft. You know, I did. I I brought her purse, her laptop, and her car back to her mom's. Oh, that stuff's already at her mom's. I thought you were having to take it back to her mom's still. You have to. You have to. No, go I did that. I did that. Uh, That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, all of her other stuff, which is in the back of my truck, in my truck, and I'll bring that to her mom's if, if we haven't found Kelly yet by then. Okay. So she has, she has no purse, no money. She takes her guitar and some clothes, and not her chickens. And her, and her car registration. Oh, and she took her car registration. It's right. so weird that she would take that, though, and then not her purse. Because you're taking the car registration. Where would you put it? I know. In your bra? <laughs> and I can, everything, everything she did. Everything she did was just... Everything she did was just a spite. It wasn't, she wasn't thinking clearly. She was just thinking, let's spite Eddie for taking my keys and for being a dick. Uh, yep. that she got in the car right. probably despite me as well. Yeah, so she took, takes the registration because then you can't really drive it if you get pulled over without that. You know, so. I guess here's the thing is, I, I've seen in groups that the but people who, anyway. were hang, who were hanging outside saw her walk away at approximately 1 a.m. is what they're saying. The voicemail left to you is at approximately the same time. So she hadn't gotten very far when she talked to you compared to what they're saying she when she left. So it's not like she got miles down the road and somebody came and got her. If she got in a car, it had to right. be pretty much right there. And somebody drove a car out of the parking lot of that yep, motel right around the same time. Mm -hmm. The timing is extremely odd right there. Yeah. Somebody was there a bunch of like beer runs? Did yeah, you I think I, I I mean Go ahead. Well, there's a there's a there's a store right next to right uh, Pepe's right next to Sunshine Inn on the West. And I know Kelly went there that night. That's that that, that actually might be where she bought the rum because uh, a a lady saw her that night. Um which she commented on the discussion group later on that she saw her that night at Pepe's. Grocery. So to get beer and to get alcohol, all you gotta do is walk next door. You wouldn't take a car that's over there to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's very possible that was the car she got in. The one that took a left out of the Sunshine Inn at one, and everybody else, everybody's lying that said they saw her walking. Or she might have walked east, like everybody said, but she might have came back. You know, it might have been earlier than they thought when she got in the car. Anybody, did anybody say if that car oh, happened no. to start no east or east? That car, that car went west, and I and I agree with you, um, Teresa, that that I, I don't think she was far at all when she left passage from from the from the Sunshine Inn, not far at all. Makes me think yeah. somebody's car and knows what it was, or at least know even even might even know the person that did it. And um, let's see. And did we know where the debit card is? I'm sorry, comrade Jess, did I miss that? That our moms. Okay. That's a good question. What, I mean, what does your gut tell you? What, you know, their, your instinct, what do you, what do you think? I, my gut, my gut tells me that she's not okay, you know. And that's a mm -hmm. that's a shitty thing, but that's what it tells me. It tells me that she's not okay. I hope I hope she is okay though. But uh, I mean, let's face it; it's been seven weeks, no contact with anybody who's drunk. I, I you know, 
That's actually a good. There's still a very good chance she's okay, though. Yeah. Yes. There's still hope. That's a good question. Would she say she's getting um, into a car, but she didn't? Well, she said she she said she uh, she she reported the car stolen, which she did not. She said that she got a hotel room, which she did not. So she could be lying about that too. But it just sounded like in the uh, it just sounded like, yeah, and she could have been trying to bait me, to try to make, get me out of bed, and yeah, to make make it make it even the, the immediate area. But 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 it, it just sounded like it was mid. She got cut off mid sentence as if there truly was a car there and she's planning on hopping in. And she didn't text that to you. That's in the voicemail. She didn't text you. Hey, I'm, I'm leaving and I'm getting in a car. She sent you that in a voicemail, which typically right. she did text me that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. She, she did. She did text me earlier. Um, saying I'm leaving about 25 minutes before the voicemail. But yeah, the voicemail was getting into a car now. Bye. So she texted you about 25 minutes beforehand and then you still didn't respond. So she called you and she was like, all right, buddy, like you're not responding. So I'm getting in this car well, that I told you I was leaving. I did. I did respond at 12, 1235. I said, why don't you come sleep oh, that's instead right. of okay. leaving, you know? And she said, no, I no, I'd rather do that, that. And I said, okay. And I fell asleep around 1245 or so. Next morning, I get I get a message at 1 a.m. And the first thing she says in the message is, oh, you're sleeping, which I find interesting. Like, I, 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 she couldn't have been far from the motel at all. She couldn't see into the room, though, could she? Nope. Did you have the lights and everything off, though? Yeah. So maybe that I what think. she was referring to? I don't know. It's just weird that yeah, she was texting or, um, and tried and decided to leave a voicemail. It was almost like her last ditch effort. Like, listen, it's it's time. It's time to shit or get off the pot, buddy. Because I'm I'm getting in this car. You don't answer this phone. I'm out of here. Right. Yep. And, but it seems like she already I wasn't playing, playing our game, and I, I, I. In all fairness, we don't typically. We try to just be like, all right, whatever. I mean, you can't live like that. You're not going to be able to live like that forever. It's, it's never going to work because you don't expect anything bad to ever happen. And the decisions that we make aren't always just like, well, I should make this decision just in case something bad happens. We don't do that. We don't, as human beings, we don't do that. You can't let that weigh on you. But I, I, I honestly, Thank I do you, find Teresa, it interesting. I appreciate you saying that. Well, yeah, you can't do that to yourself. It's not fair. It's not fair to yourself, and it's not going to be fair to the people that love you that are around you. Right, and we never know when the last time uh, we're going to see somebody is. Like, I felt awful earlier because right before my boyfriend left to go to work, we kind of argued, and I said, like, some hateful stuff, man. And then when I got to his work, he's working with my sister, rehabbing a house. And I hugged him and I said, I was sorry. And I was thinking about this live and I'm like, man, you know, what if that, what if something happened? And that would have been the last thing I said to him. Like everybody, you know, right. thinks that, way, but you didn't know what was going to happen. She's right. You can't beat yourself up about that. You know? Yeah. I find it um, interesting that she said she was leaving and she's down there hanging out with this group of people. She says she's leaving. Like somebody that's in this group of people says, hey, I'm leaving. Why don't you go ahead and just come with me? So she like warns you and says like, hey, you know, you better talk to me. Otherwise, I'm leaving. And it's almost like th this conversation was happening in this group of people. And this is me speculating, obviously. I was I have no behind any yeah, of this. Yeah, I think. But then she's like, all right. And then like calls you to like say, hey. Well, I, can, I can hear it. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. No, it's okay. Again, I can I can hear um I can I can hear voices after she says all right bye. I can hear some voices, which which might be the people in the car, but it might be people just right next to her. You know, I I, I have almost no doubt somebody that was at that motel that night has answers that they're not. All they got to do is is say which car it was. You're not going to get in trouble if you tell us what car it was. 
I don't think you can get in trouble for withholding information. Um, but but if you if there's anybody out there that knows what cart you got in, please tell us. It, it's going to help us find her. Yeah, don't be afraid. You need to do the right thing. If you if anybody that does know happens to ever hear this video, yeah, you, yeah, you can't be afraid. This is this is somebody's daughter, somebody's family, somebody's loved one. You can be anonymous too. I mean, you don't even have to say who you are. Yes. Um, Allie, that's a good question. The people that saw her walking away, there were three or four people. Were they talk? Did they talk to police? Are they to be believed, or could they? We, I think we hit on this a little bit earlier. You said it's possible they made that up to deflect from something else happening, right? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, there the, the four different people that were, weren't really a group. They were just random people around. I, I asked them, and they all said the same thing, um, which would make sense. That would she grab her guitar and walk east towards town, and maybe right, right on the other side of that fence or something, somebody picked her up. The road, but every, everybody voicemail, they're like, she's not walking on the road because there's no background noise. I don't know. She's she might have one of those phones where you don't have a lot of background noise. I I don't know. I I don't know where she was when she left that message. I mean, she she yeah. I, I think she was standing there. I don't think she was walking. So I don't know what the hell. Let's see. Um, I think, I can't remember if we talked about that earlier. He did, yeah, he stole those and you were storing them in his room, right? Yeah, he asked me if I if I put some stuff in his room because I was, I was switching rooms every night looking for Kelly and I had a bunch of weight in the, in the car. You know, the car, it's a Toyota Camry, her car, and he's getting weighed down. So I did, I, I brought a bunch of stuff up to his room and uh, just to, just to get it off my back. And um, I go in there two days later, and the two guitars and my amp are gone. But those have been found. But that, that's already been figured out. But JR's not going to get arrested for it because they can't prove that he stole them. The only guy that's going to get in trouble is the guy that actually sold the guitars to the pawn shop, which they they know who did that. Oh, so it wasn't him that took them to the pawn shop? It was someone else? Nope. No, nope. he brought them downstairs and asked this guy to pawn them for him. And wow. he did. Yeah, so there really is no legal recourse against him, I guess, right? Even though he he kind of was in charge unless, of unless, him, right? Unless he was in the car with him. Unless he was in the car with Chuck and went and went to the pawn shop. Um, maybe we can get him on video of him being in the car shop. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can do it. I guess I'm curious to find out if any of these people that were hanging out in the parking lot end up on surveillance anywhere else when they're supposed to be in bed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I figure the cops are going to be on that. I mean, they're the only ones that can get video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we tried. I, I um, me, Stephanie suggested it. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. But we tried um, to like. I tried to call around those. Yeah, places. I just want to say, just. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Eddie. <laughs> Nobody will tell me anything, though. Basically, I'm not okay. the cop, so they won't tell me what what is on video or what isn't. But that stuff gets deleted after you know so long. So that's all I wanted to say. Continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's. He's interesting, that's for sure. If I understand right, and again, I'll post the link. I don't want to get into too much right now, right this second. But I understand he's about 42. Is that right, JR? I believe I read that earlier. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then yep. you can, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Did did Do we happen to know if this guy who pawned the guitars and stuff is obviously somebody that JR quote unquote trusts. Has he been talked to by the police about Kelly? Well, apparently he's he's in jail right now for something else. So I assume he has because they know he was mm -hmm. he was at the home um, that mm -hmm. night. Uh, he 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 told me that he he didn't because I I talked to him the next morning and he he says he never even met her. He, he apparently he was 
but he could know he could know something too. I have no idea. I don't trust anybody at that motel. Right. All right. Let's see. I know. I was just looking. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't see them smoking meth, but I heard from from, from people that were at the motel that that's what they do there. Hmm. Well, just from experience, typically the cheapest motel in a small town is always ends up being that spot. From somebody yep. who's lived in known as a drug towns. motel to the locals. Right. I agree. Go with your instinct. And I definitely think that there's a lot of shady stuff right there that needs to be followed up on. Um, I'm assuming they are, but I was thinking that today when I was reading it too. Well, Jesse had said that Jr. went to his room at 10:30 to basically tell him, "Hey, like you know, your girl's downstairs. You know, you need to come and you know, you know, take care of her. She's trying. You know, she's got keys. She's trying to leave." And then Jr. told him he was going to bed or that he had gone to bed after he knocked on his door, and then come to find out from all the other people that were at the motel, Jr. was down there still. So he, the, I think the, the 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 one instinct of the fact is that he lied about going to bed. So why did he lie about going to bed? Why didn't he just say no? I went back down there and I saw her walk away at one o'clock, like everybody else did. All right. No lie that about that. No reason unless you have seriously something to hide. Or he's covering for someone too. Well, and that would be him having something to hide, so. Right. Yeah. I was seeing that today. I think it would be a good idea to en enhance the audio. I was thinking the same thing today. In a hotel bathroom, I think, would echo. Like, it, you know, she could have been inside um, somewhere. But just, I don't know. It just really sounds like she decided at that moment as she was speaking to get into a car. But even if you're walking through like two cement walls, yeah. like if there's like a, like, you know, a, a what do you call it? A over your head. Overhang the, maybe. A, a overhang from the upstairs. And then you're walking in between two columns or anything. It creates like an echo sound too. And typically in motels, they have that for like the part where you're going into the parking lot. I don't know if this one did Eddie, but I mean, echoes can kind of bounce off of anything that's like that. So, I mean, it could be a bathroom, but that isn't necessary. It's not necessarily what it was. The there's, a lot of, there's a lot of overhangs in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that on the in the group, too. I saw the where the covered overhang is. So, we'll have to... I want to look at all of this stuff more later tonight and tomorrow, for sure. All right, we've been on for almost two hours. Do you I know, guys I have thinking, I was like, We're taking up all of Eddie's, Eddie's time. He's like, I've been on my phone all day I already. I, I know that <laughs> you've got to be tired. So if, um, and, and where you are, it's, it's even, it's like 1030. So we'll probably jump off for tonight, but I'd love to keep talking to you. And I hope you'll come back on and talk to us. And we will share this video, share the flyers, try to get people to join the groups, anything we can do, like I said. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank Eddie, you. thank you so much for coming on. And we we um we hope for a good outcome here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, my heart goes out Me to too. you. Me too. Me right, well, too. Answers answers would be good one way or another. I know. Well, we're not we're gonna keep in touch with you and we're gonna like I said, I wanna we wanna look into things. We have a huge team. We we love doing this stuff and we'll do whatever you need us to do and mainly get the word out because i find that you know as much as we do this exposure is key and just getting it out everywhere we can get most people talking you can and that's the best thing we can do right now while we kind of wait you know definitely that's great and we do have a, we do have a gofundme and we do have a we do have a discussion group so thanks thanks so much everybody Yes, we will. We'll share that. And um, thank you so much. And like I said, I'll be in touch soon. And thank you guys for joining me and everyone that's commenting. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys all have a great night. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Bye. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.
Bye. Bye-bye.